Hey Gophers, happy Sunday, or if you're not part of our community and you're just looking at uh, this mining video, welcome as well. Hope you're having a good weekend so far. Um, but yeah, happy to finally bring you the mining profitability deck. Eagerly awaited, requested by a lot of people. But before we do get started, I just want to say this is very general. Uh, any numbers you do see are just estimations. Crypto is so volatile and the price of these coins depends on so many factors and mining even more so. Not only are you dependent on the price of the coin, but also there's other things that are coming into play. So just none of this is financial advice, very general. I'm just gonna show you how you should start to think about profitability rather than like this gonna be the exact profit for this period. But yeah, quick agenda for today. So definitions, when I was first getting into mining, there's definitely a lot of jargon, like, oh, hash rate this, this is the mining pool, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to break some of that down. I'll then go through the variables. So what does determine profitability out of those which can we control, which can't we control? I'll then get into the meat and potatoes of this presentation. So how you look at mining revenue, how you look at the cost, and then obviously revenue minus cost to get to that profit figure. Um, I'll then just remind you of the split, what we're gonna be mining, which machines we're gonna be using, and then I'll conclude with going through some different scenarios. So we'll we'll look at the deep bear market to show like what will happen if Bitcoin goes even lower. Will we still will we still be profitable? I'll then show you what profitability can look like today, given today's difficulty. And then I'll go through the more optimistic. So when we see a bit of recovery in the Bitcoin price, and then long term when we do return to those all time highs, what it will look like. Okay, so before we really get into it, what is mining? So some people might take this for granted, but I do get this question quite a lot. So I thought I'd just break it down. In a nutshell, mining is a proof of work system. So there's two systems in crypto. There's two consensus algorithms. There's proof of stake and there's proof of work. Proof of work came first. It's essentially you giving up your computing power in order to verify transactions on the blockchain, on one specific blockchain, and then securing that blockchain and getting rewarded for doing so. So you're giving your computational power and you're getting rewarded in that coin. Okay, so some definitions then. Difficulty rate. This is a measure of how many other people are mining. So if there's a lot of people mining, it's more difficult to get the coin. If there's me and 10 other people mining, I'm going to get a lot of Bitcoin. If there's a million people mining, we're all going to get less Bitcoin. Hash rate. So this is the computational power of a miner. So if you go on asicminervalue.com, you can see all the different uh, crypto miners, the profitability and the hash rate. Mining pool then. So this is when a big group of miners get together because then together you have way more hash rate and you're way more likely to mine a coin. So it used to be in the early days you could actually self mine, but now you have to join a mining pool. So at GGMC, we're actually looking at having it dynamically select the most profitable mining point pool for each coin that we're mining. Kilowatt hour then, uh, that's just the amount of energy per hour. So often when you're looking at electricity prices, it will be quoted in kilowatt hour, and then you convert that up to a daily rate in order to look at profitability. But we'll get more into that later. ASIC versus GPU then. So ASIC is an application specific integrated circuit. So essentially it's a purpose built computer purely for mining one specific coin. So for example, the S19 XP mines Bitcoin, that's its one job. Um, the KA3 when it comes out is gonna mine just Kadena. GPU then, that's a graphics processing unit. You can also mine on them. The beauty of them is it's very dynamic. You can mine whatever coin you want. You can set it to uh, mine whatever you want, but uh, it's nowhere near as efficient. And actually currently GPU mining is not profitable. In the old days, you could even mine with CPUs, but um, not anymore. <laughs> they definitely don't have the power required now. Okay, so what actually determines profitability? Well, way more than these four things. There's so many different factors, but these are the main ones that you can kind of think about. So difficulty, what we just spoke about. So how many other people are mining? Obviously, we have no control over that whatsoever, um, but it is very important. It makes a big difference and it does change minute by minute. 
coin price as well. So again, sadly, we have no control over that. We're in a deep, deep bear market. It's probably going to last for a bit longer. Um, but the good news is the halving in 2024, if we're still in a bear market by then, that normally creates a great bull run. Um, OK, so an electric cost, this we can control as well as machine price. So economies of scale were at play here. And this was the initial idea of the project. If I, as an individual, wanted to go buy an ASIC, plug it in, I'm paying residential electricity, which in New York would be something like 0.14 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and as you'll see, we've got nearly half that rate. Um, and then machine price, you're just buying one, these supplies, you're not, you're not like a big fish, so you're getting the highest price you possibly can. But one that we've got a big community, like we're fortunate enough to have at Gophers, then we get much, much better rates. They, we've, I've been negotiating for eight months, um, so I've got a lot of good machine suppliers. And the same for electricity cost. Our partner farm really understands the value of the project, the long term nature and how we can really benefit each other in the long term. So because of that, we've got really, really good rates on both electric and machine price. OK, revenue then. Do not be scared by the numbers here and the formula. You don't normally work it out like this. You just, uh, it, it's 2022, you just go online, ASIC minor value in every machine. It will tell you the daily rewards you can expect. But I thought I'd just break down the actual formula in case some people are interested. So to get the daily coin reward, this is how you look at it. So you take the hash rate of the individual machine divided by the network hash rate. So that's all the machines together. That then gives you a difficulty multiplier. And again, if this seems crazy, just <laughs> don't worry about it. You can just look it up. Um, and then you take that difficulty multiplier times the daily block reward. So let's take the S19 XP, for example. This is the most efficient and newest Bitcoin miner currently. It's the ones that we're going to be getting. They're around $5,000, but I think we can get them for $4,000 or less. Um, so before we get into this example, all the numbers here are going to be daily, just for simplicity's sake. So the hash rate of an S19 XP is 140 terahash a second. And by the way, that's crazy. The machines a few years ago were doing like 15 terahash. So it's a really, really good machine. But yeah, so it's, its hash rate is 140. As of today, the network on uh, for Bitcoin, the total network hash rate is 260 million. So we take that 140 over 260 million to get that difficulty multiplier. OK, then the other side of the equation is the daily block reward. So you might be wondering, it's pretty well known that the block reward for Bitcoin is 6.25. BTC every time a block is mined. The reason that number is a little bit higher there is because when you mine a block, you also get the transaction fees associated with that block. And then that 144, that just represents the fact that there's a block mined every 10 minutes. So therefore, there's 144 per day. So you times that out and it gives you 0 0.0005 BTC mined a day. I've given the dollar value there as well. Um, but Usually for mining, you're not too worried about the dollar value immediately. Obviously, you have to cover the electricity. But after that, it's about holding the coin, especially in a bear market. You mine all the coins you possibly can waiting for that bull run because the price that you sell it at, let's say you wait until Bitcoin's 50K, it's like you've been mining it at that price the whole time. And that's the power with mining. OK, so the other side of it then cost. So how do you look at cost? So it depends on how much you're paying per kilowatt hour. As I said, residential where I am in New York would be 14 cents or more. Um, and then you take that divided by the consumption of the machine. You then times that by 24 hours just because we're looking at things on a daily basis. So for that S19 XP, we take 8 cents per kilowatt hour divided by 3,010 watts or 0 0.301 kilowatts times 24 hours to get our daily rate of electricity. So you can see that that would be 5.58 per day. Profit then, so of course it's uh, mind rewards minus electric cost. So as long as you're above that electric cost, you're good, which of course we are. 
and then we've got 0.0012 per day. I wouldn't even look at the 252 because as I said, you, you, you don't mine and immediately sell. You mine and then hold for the bull run. Okay, so before I go into the scenarios, let's just go through the mining split, just give you guys a quick reminder. So half of our miners are going to be S19XPs mining Bitcoin, a quarter of them are going to be KA3s mining Kadena, and then the rest, the 25% will be like uh, will be L7s merge mining Dogecoin and Litecoin. Um, so they're script miners. And how that works is you connect to the Litecoin and Dogecoin pools. It will then merge mine, meaning the Doge is immediately sold for Litecoin and then you hold on to that Litecoin. So scenario one, again, these, these numbers are just pure estimations. Um, we've got a lot of internal data. Um, but the, the main reason this slide is here is just to show you that if Bitcoin does reach 12K, which is a significant drop, we're still profitable. So we'd still we wouldn't be unprofitable. We'd still be running our machines. We'd still be accumulating those coins waiting for the bull market. Um, and yeah, so you can see on the top there, we've got 60 S19 XPs, 30 L7s and 30 KA3s. Again, that's just ballpark as a very rough estimate. I would think that's roughly what we'll have after the compounding period. But again, as many factors as there are for mining and the, and the price of coins, same thing applies for the miners very market dependent. I mean, XPs at the moment are going for like four or 5,000. A few months back, they're going for more than 11. KA3s, um, they're not out yet, but the pre-orders were about six, 7K. Now they've doubled. L7s, um, after Elon bought Twitter, that as well doubled. Yeah, nearly doubled the L7 price. So again, just really market dependent. After Mint, we're not going to immediately buy all the machines at once. We're going to buy slowly, dollar cost average, monitor the situation and get really, really good prices for our community. On the left there, I've just broken down monthly, quarterly and annually. So uh, in other words, if you look at the top row, that's the total revenue per month, quarterly and annually. And again, these figures are just ballpark. That's at today's difficulty. Um, and that obviously wouldn't be 100% accurate because if coins did go to this price, a lot of miners unfortunately would go out of business. That means the difficulty would go down and we'd be mining more. So it'd actually be much more profitable than this. Again, it's purely for illustration. Okay, so if coins are at the prices they are today and we manage to get this number of machines, this is roughly how profitable will be. So you can see the uh, KA3 is absolutely killing it. And again, it's because there's on Kadena, there's much less miners compared to Bitcoin, which people have been mining for five, six years. Um, and then L7s in the middle there, merge mining Litecoin and Dogecoin. OK, and now again, take these numbers with a pinch of salt. This is if we see a 50 percent recovery. So Bitcoin's at 25,000, Litecoin's back at 95. So it's it's the start of the uptrend. So if we mined all those coins with our cost structure and we held them and the difficulty was the same, this is something what it could potentially look like. Um, so you can see much, much more now in total 1.15 million. Uh, annually. So yeah, really, really exciting stuff. So finally, and this is where it gets uh, quite mad. <laughs> this is when coins get to all time highs. So we mine, we're mine, we're mining in that bear market, we're holding all the coins, waiting for them to get back to all time highs. Um, I think you guys are just as bullish on crypto as I am. I genuinely believe they will re reach these all time highs and actually much higher. It's just a matter of time. We are going to see adoption. This tech really, really is incredible and is transformative in the way we do everything. It's just going to take time. But yes, once it does get to these prices, this is what it might look like. And again, it's it would actually be a bit lower than this because uh, well, it's, it might be a bit higher as well, because we're going to have more machines we would have compounded a lot more by then. But also it becomes a bit like a gold rush. So you have to think about game theory. If mining is this profitable, there's going to be a lot more people buying miners. And similarly, in the bear situation, there's going to be less people mining. So it, it's it's very interesting if you look at the difficulty rates online. 
Um, but yeah, this is roughly what it might look like. So very, very exciting stuff. Um, and yeah, so the GGMC is a long-term project. We're going to be mining these coins, waiting for that bull run, and it's going to be very fruitful for our holders. And this is just one revenue stream, I might add. We're also going to have the treasury. We're going to be getting in so many exciting projects like whiskeys, aging that whiskey, selling it at physical bear market play. We're going to look to get into property. We're going to be having trading bots. There's so much. A gopher really is going to be the best vehicle to get diversified exposure to so many aspects of crypto but yeah thank you for listening to me ramble on about mining and how the profitability might look like that was a very basic high level overview um, if you guys want to go want me to go further in depth just let me know we'll release another video at some point i could also look at the different professions and show you like the base payout for mining again it would be a very rough estimate and then uh, how each profession would be affected by that base um, but yeah, any other video ideas, just let us know in the Discord. Thanks so much for listening, guys.